My you know, I gotta ask you, <laughs> what's up with this new uh, new do? Yeah, something something different, man. Something new, new. <laughs> Looks good, man. You look like a super saiyan. We got questions from media from all across the globe. You ready to go? Ready to go, man. Shoot away. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, first question is from Jude from Overtime MMA. You've gone up and down in weight division, saying you successfully defend this title on the 30th. Would you stay in featherweight and defend the belt for good? This is my legacy, man. Uh, the featherweight division is where I belong. Um, going going up in a weight division to fight at lightweight doesn't motivate me. Um, going down division to band weight still doesn't motivate me. The only one fight that I'll go down for is the one fight that I really realistically thought I'd won. But, um, you know, I... I at the moment, everything is at featherweight for me, and that's why I feel good. That's why I feel safe and healthy and um, at my best. Man, you look in incredible shape for this one. We got a question here from Jay Anderson of Cage Side Press. Tali suggested that this could be a long rivalry between you two. Do you see it that way? Sorry, he just he cut out a bit there. Sorry. Sorry, let me say it again. Jay Anderson from Cage Side Press. Says Tani thinks this might be a long rivalry between you two. You see it that way as well? Uh, I don't see it as a rivalry at all. I don't know the guy ever bar a soap. Uh, he's just another opponent on the list. Um, it's my job to take him out and defend his title and move on to the next. Next question from Jay Anderson of Cape Side Press. Where do you feel Tan <laughs> poses the biggest threat? And given does he, that he hasn't gone five rounds like you have m many times, do you want to drag him into those deep waters to test him? 100%, man. Uh, we, we've we studied everything about uh, Tan Lee. Um, there is no game plan. It's going in there and purely showcasing my skills um, and doing what I do best, man, and that's laying hands on my opponent. But um, in terms of Tan Lee and you know, his, his record and everything like that, uh, I think the longest he's been is like two minutes and 35 seconds in the second round. Uh, I would love to take him to the deep waters if it gets there. Uh, for me, it's up to myself to do my job from the get-go, from that first round, that first bell. After Dom Lau walks out of that cage, I have to do my thing, man. Yeah. Next question here again from Nick Nick Atkin of South China Morning Post. Ang La said you look like Cisco with the new haircut. How do you respond? <laughs> what a hater. <laughs> what a hater. <laughs> You know what? The only person that doesn't like it is my wife. She's slowly coming to terms. Uh, everyone that realistically has has messaged me or reached out to me, um, they dig the new look, man. And you know what? I, I mean, it's a one-time thing. Hey, hey, it's going to grow out and it's not going to be like this forever. But it's something different, something new, new uh, coming into this fight. Uh, shock a bit of people <laughs> coming into it. Yeah, rock it, man. You look good. <laughs> my guy. Thank you. <laughs> Question from Conan Altatis. How does it feel like being on the same card as your mate, Angla? Does it give you an extra boost, extra confidence, extra motivation? Uh, you know what? Uh, some people don't know. Me and Angla fought on the same card. I fought Kazanari Koto and Angla fought for last minute title shot against Vitaly Big Dash number one. Um, that's where we first actually got to, sp got to speak and hang out. Um, but yeah, like this is the second card now. Uh, I've lived with the guy last eight weeks. We we man we've been we uh we sleep in the same house we eat together we do everything on the weekend everything is be like we we have the same journey everything he's experiencing I'm experiencing we get into that training room we put our heart on the line um, blood sweat and tears when it came to this fight uh, fight camp so uh, uh, it's an honor for me to be on the same card as him uh, we would have loved for our other brother Tio to be on the same card but it is what it is. Um, but man, this is this is gonna be a night of fireworks for the both of us, and very excited for the both of us. Yeah, we see we, you got Teal over here with you as well. Any <laughs> any um, notice on when he's going up next? Uh, we had to bring Amber Rose with us uh, <laughs> over. Uh, he he's, he's good vibes, man, and you know fight week vibes. Is we you need that those good vibes. You know everything is a positive. He makes us laugh. He makes us not think about the fight. Um, and then when it's time to think about the fight, it's tunnel vision. So important to have someone like that, man. You got Jude from Overtime Heroics MMA with this question. Your perseverance and motivation in every fight has inspired many young and aspiring athletes. How does it make you feel that you carry a lot of hope in the youth? You know, um, this is 
this is the ultimate journey. Uh, someone, someone who can look up to us as athletes and say, man, because of you, you know, we, we never stopped doing what we're doing. Because of you, we, we pushed ourselves every single day. I like the way you do this. I like the way you do that. Um, it kind of works and marries with my style and um, your resilience, the way you come out of adversity, everything like that. It, it kind of motivates us. Like, this is what we work hard for. And this is, you know, it's for us at the time, we didn't realize it, but this is, this is what builds character. And um, for young guys to look up to us, um, and even older guys messaging us, you know, a, a younger generation guy um, giving motivation to older generation guys, it's, it's, yeah, it's a dream come true anyway. Yeah, what a journey has been, man. And I'm sure you're going to have a lot more left. We got another question here from Nick Atkin again from South China Morning Post. Tan Lee said he's going to turn you into a wrestler or grappler real quick. What's your response? And this is mixed martial arts. I can wrestle him from the get-go. I can wrestle him in the later rounds. I can do whatever I want. Um, but for me, I ain't looking for wrestling. Man. I'm going in there just to lay hands. Let that be known. Let that be known. Question again from Mike Clifton of Low Kick MMA. Tali spoke about this as well. How keen are you on competing on a card in Vietnam? Since we heard that MMA is now legal. And what would it mean for you to compete on that card? It'll be an honor uh, for me to, you know, even be on a main card or on a card in Vietnam. Um, Vietnam mixed martial arts has grown uh, dramatically. Uh, for myself to be facing Tan Lee, it's it's nothing but good vibes and positive vibes heading towards v Vietnam mixed martial arts. You know, we can hang the best in the world, and we we have world championship credentials in us. So um, for Vietnam, this is a win-win situation. Um, yeah. That'd be incredible. Mike Clifton from Low Kick MMA Watch, he asked, Australian MMA seems to be on the rise at the moment. How do you see the sport developing and growing over the next five years, both in terms of talent and coverage? Man, Australian mixed martial arts is, it's, it's a forever growing um, community. Uh, you got young guys coming through that are super talented. You got, got the old guys there that are, that are passing on the, the right knowledge to... Everyone is working. The only thing um, that I dislike about Australian mixed martial arts is the, the gym politics, like my gym versus your gym, and you can't go to this gym, you can't go to that gym. That's the only thing that I disagree on when it comes to mixed martial arts uh, in Australia. But, um, man, it's every, everyone in Australia, there's, we've got majority of the guys now um, in one of the top leading uh, organisations. Uh, you'll see we've got champions, man, we've got everything. Um, coming out of Australia. So we can hang with the best coming from a little island. <laughs> yeah, speaking a little bit about that, when you were home last, before you flew out for this camp, looked like you had a good team of Australian guys all training together. What was that like? Man, it's just a blessing. These guys are, you know, they're, they're up and comers. There's some up and comers and there's some guys that are in, that, in our group is just very, very talented, but they don't really want to compete. They just enjoy the daily life training and, you know, mixing it up with, world champions and um, world championship coaches and just mixing up with everyone that comes through and wants to train with us and, you know, feeling different bodies. There's no gym politics when it comes to our gym. Um, everyone is welcome. And everyone that comes through is like more than honored. Like they think it's like, Oh my God, I, do I have to pay to train with you? I was like, nah, man, like, this is, this is, this is a uh, for all, for everyone. The more, the merrier. This is, this is for the love of the sport. And this is, that's what it is with the guys at home, man. Man, I love that. That's really the only way that we all get better. Just come in, best guys train together, all looking for the same goal, getting better. Next question from Fight Game Asia. You and Tan Lee have very similar styles. Both of you can stand and trade and have tremendous knockout power. In the grappling department, both of you have not had the chance to really showcase your skills in the one circle. What do you think will be the difference in this fight? What aspect of your game do you think gives you the edge? The difference in this fight is whoever has the will or has wants the will to win. Uh, we're both very talented fighters. Uh, we're both very dynamic strikers. Um, I'm sure we're very dynamic grapplers as well. Obviously, we didn't have we don't have much uh, grappling time in that one championship cage. We just look for damage and the finish, and that's that's our fighting style. It is what it is. Um, but in terms of this this bout with Tan Lee, it's whoever has the will to win. 
whoever has that hunger to win more than the other guys. So um, make that no mistake, man. I, I'm coming in there and only for one thing, and that's the W. And you got to be hyped. Next question from Doug out Philippines. What or who inspired you to dye your hair? <laughs> you know, it's something that I've just always wanted to do. I used to do it back in high school and it comes out like a ranger. I look orange. But um, this time I was like, you know, it was just one of those things where I, I've always wanted to try it. Just always, just one time. And, and like I, I asked my wife at the start of the camp and she goes, no. Midway through the camp, no. And so I just said to her, I'm going to dye my hair. And she goes, Yo, you're leaving for fight week tomorrow. I'm like, it is what it is. I just didn't reply to that message. I came out. I, she woke up the next day and I was like platinum, <laughs> completely platinum. I was like, it's going to grow out. Who cares, man? Deal with it. It's just, it's only hair, but it's something different, you know? <laughs> Another question here, man, from Fight Game Asia. Needless to say, this fight doesn't look like it's going to go the distance. Do you agree with that statement? And how do you think this fight will end? The, air, the fight will end by all, any means possible um, for, for myself anyway. But um, you never know, man. This is I don't really look into that type of, type of stuff no more. You know, the, the last time I was looking into it, me and Christian Lee said that we we're going to finish each other and the guy ended up running for the whole five, five rounds, 25 minutes. And, you know, it was just, it wasn't, an exciting bout and I don't want that I me mean, I'm just going to go in there and do my thing um, and if I get the finish then I get the finish if it goes all five and rounds and I'll make sure I'm dominant enough to to get that to get that win I spent a lot of time this uh, lockdown period studying the champions you yourself and if you look at the matchup and look at one of the losses in Tandy's record he kind of swung into an overhand right walked into the overhand right which is one of your biggest weapons you gonna be looking for that this uh, Friday, dude. A lot of people, and I guarantee you, from the fight when I first started off one championship, everyone's saying he's got a right hand. All he's got is a right hand. All he has is throwing that right hand. Uh, just don't get hit with it. How did you not get hit with something that you can't see coming? Like for real, everyone knows I have it, but they still get hit with it. And you know, all it takes is just one, one clean shot to put anyone out, and that's all I ask for. And that's all I'm going to do. Just look for that clean shot. Uh, obviously, I've got other tools in my hands. I work with the best striking and, and basically the world, the best striking coach, uh, Henry Hoof. I work with the best wrestling coach, uh, Greg, Greg Jones and Kami Bazani. Like we have other different aspects of our game that we've improved on so much. And my wrestling has improved so much in this fight camp. Um, but you know what? It's, it's, it's a fight. We're going in there. It's mixed martial arts. I'll do whatever it takes. If I have to wrestle him, if I have to strike with him, if I have to push him past the, the third, fourth, fifth round, take him to deep waters, I will do that. You know, he's, he's never been there. And it's, and that's a crucial moment. That's the cage time experience. Um, you never know how he would feel like after going past that second round, like he, he's never been there before, you know, he might panic. You never know. He might excel even more. He might come out stronger. You never know. This is the plan. This is the plan to test him. This is, this is the test his championship, world championship credentials, if he's worthy enough to take the title or not. Yeah, no bigger test for him than you, my man. And one big thing that I noticed from you moving over to Sanford MMA, working with Henry Hoof, as you really showed a more patient style, going to the body, working on those low calf kicks, really breaking them down slowly, and then landing that big right hand. Tell us about how training over there at Sanford MMA has helped you. Man, training with the guys at Sanford has been a blessing, for real. Um, I never, yeah, I have my, my striking coach, Chrysler, and uh, Skinny Usain at home, but I don't really, I never really had that confidence in, like, engaging and um, you know, being in the pocket and everything like that. But working with Henry, working on my guard, working on low kicks, working on, you know, every bit of aspect of my game. Um, and just, it's just more about the mental warfare, just giving me that confidence to stand and bang. Um that, that there, I feel, has uh, coming forward with the pressure, the styles, Henry, so Henry styles, like pressure game, everything like that. Um, and it showed on my last fight against Mashashima. You know, first round was a bit tricky. We had to figure each other out. But once I figured out his movements and I, 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 I man, attacking the body, sprawling, attacking the legs, attacking the face, the head, everything I can. And you never seen Koyomi break like that. And he broke and I ultimately got the finish.
that was such an incredible performance. I was cage side there watching that one. Man, this featherweight division, five to one, top to bottom. A lot of contenders, a lot of new blood coming in as well. Give us your thoughts of the status of the featherweight con featherweight division. Yeah, these guys are, you know, they they've all got world championship credentials. Um, they've all got one. All they need is a shot, right? Um, they will eventually get their shot. Uh, regardless, I gave Chatri a list of the guys who I want to fight um, in this division. And I'm not moving divisions until I fight every single one of these guys, give they, every single one of them a chance. I'm not about holding up divisions. I'm not about anything like that anymore. I'm, I'm about defending this legacy and only fighting the best. And these guys in the top five are the best, for real. One of the names we got to talk about, Gary Tonin. He's been calling you out for a while now. Tell us what you think about that matchup. Yeah, Gary Tonin, um, good on him for calling me out. Uh, not everyone wants to fight him. Uh, his next fight is a good good fight, Gary. Uh, Koyomi. Um, it's a good test for him. Um, he hasn't fought anyone high caliber. I, I feel Koyomi Mashishima, another level now. He, he, he's had a comeback fight after that world title loss, and he looked phenomenal. Great. So um, for Gary Turner to be testing himself against Tesla, um, and a dynamic striker as well. It'll be a good test for him. And, you know, the winner of that fight, you know, could possibly be my next fight. And not to take you away from this Tan Lee bout, but we got another name thrown in there as well. Christian Lee mentioned that he's still eyeing the lightweight, divi still eyeing the, well, lightweight, the featherweight division, excuse me. What do you got to say about that? Are you focused about watching his fight with Yuri? I see at the moment, and that's defending the lightweight title. Um, he's got a lot of killers in line waiting for that title. I don't think they'll be happy if he holds up the division. But um, by all means, Christian's only man. He's he he's, he was a young kid. He he was growing. Um, he could possibly make the featherweight uh, featherweight weight system again. But will he feel the same? That's the that's the big question that you got to ask. You know, he's. He's walking around heavy. I can see that he's walking around heavy. Um, but will he perform the same as what he used to? Cutting weight. I've, 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 felt, I've felt it personally going down to Benton where I don't feel the same. I feel like I was all bone and every hit that I took, man, it was like I felt like I got hit by a, a heavyweight, you know? Yeah. And that was the last question of the day. Thank you so much for your time. Always nice to talk to you, my man. My guy. All the best this Friday. Peace. Thank you.